Hello and welcome again. Today we want to talk a little bit about a very important rule in transition metal chemistry, the so-called so 18 electron rule. Maybe you remember the 8 electron rule or octet rule. So this rule for transition metals is a little bit similar, but is a little bit more complicated. Okay, 18 electrons. I give you an example for a compound, let's say hexacarbonyl tungsten. The so first question is where are these 18 electrons here? Well, actually we cannot just simply count 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, then we will end up with 12. This is not 100% true. We have 12 electrons in the bonds. And these 12 electrons come from 6 times carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has a lone pair. Actually, I should draw it like this. And each ligand has two electrons in the bonds. Okay, now these are 12 electrons. But the tungsten also has electrons, and here we are looking only on the D electrons. So tungsten, if we check in the periodic table, is in column number 6. That means the missing 6 electrons come from the D6 electrons in tungsten together 18 electrons. 18 valence electrons. 18 electrons containing in the bonds. And this configuration means that this number of electrons indicates a very stable compound. Okay. How can we explain that these 18 electrons make a stable complex? Okay, we should draw back to the ligand field theory. Please watch my video about this subject also if you did not have yet. In the ligand field theory or MO theory, we have the molecular orbit, uh, sorry, the atomic orbitals of the metal on the left side, P orbitals S and P. S and P are empty for transition metals. Electrons are only here. And we have six ligands. Six ligand orbitals. Each has two electrons. So if we check which orbitals will fit together, we find from the ligand orbitals there is one that fit together with the S, three with the P, and two fit together with the D orbitals of the metal. Here we can fill 12 electrons in these levels. So these 12 electrons are actually the, the electrons coming from the ligand forming the metal ligand bonds. Now still we have three antibonding orbitals from the metal and two, sorry, non-bonding and two antibonding orbitals at the metal. Antibonding because these two are the antibonding partner to this one. Okay, what does that mean for the electron configuration? If we have 12 electrons, it looks like, okay, it's already enough. Molecule should be happy because all these low-lying levels are filled. This can be true in some cases, but normally we also want to fill the non-bonding levels. And if we count together, we get nine levels here, including the non-bonding P2 level. And if we fill all electrons, then we get 18 electrons in the low-lying orbitals. We don't want to fill more because then we have to put them in the antibonding orbitals, which is not nice, energetically not favored. So 18 electrons by filling the non-bonding and the bonding part in the metal ligand orbitals. So for electron counting, I suggest the first step you do, you check the central metal. How many D electrons does the metal have? 
and therefore we just check the periodic table. The number of the column is the number of d electrons. That means it starts with 3, with candium SD, and ends up with 12 in zinc. So the number of electrons from the metal can be 3 to 12. Okay, for the ligand electron count, we can make a difference between three groups, actually. We have ligands that have a negative charge. For example, fluorine minus, bromine minus, hydride H minus, or methyl minus, or OH minus or CN cyanide minus. So ligands that have a negative charge, they all count as one electron. They count as if they give one electron to the bond. Okay, first group. Second group, we have neutral ligands. Neutral means that these ligands exist as neutral molecules by themselves. For example, carbon monoxide, water, ammonia, phosphine, and even something like this, olefin, with a double bond. So all these neutral ligands have a lone pair. Water has two, but they make it bond only with one, okay? Nitrogen, lone pair, phosphorus, lone pair, and here the double bond make a bond to the metal. So it's not a lone pair, but it's also a single, is a L3, if you want, three electron pair that bound, bounds to the metal. So all these neutral ligands have two electrons. Okay, these are the most common one, but there's a special group of ligands I will discuss in the next part. The third group of ligands, which is very important, are so-called aromatic ligands. Aromatic means they have pi electrons, which follow the so-called Hückel rule. Hückel rule says we have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. n can be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Most important example is the benzene molecule with 6 pi electrons. And you remember that these electrons are delocalized that gives the molecule a very high stability and also the molecule is flat in the paper. So the benzene can make a bond or actually bonds to a metal with all its, with all its six electrons. So in this case benzene ligand would count as six electron ligand. Another one which is very famous, very common, is the so-called cyclopentadienyl. And the cyclopentadienyl is actually CP minus, has six electrons also, is delocalized, but here we count as five electrons. Why is that? Because we can imagine that all the five carbons make a bond. Actually, they make five bonds to the metal, and this counts as five electrons. Here we have six carbons, six bonds, six electrons. Okay, another interesting case would be something like this. Is it plus? So here this electron pair also is delocalized and the plus charge can also go from one to the other. So actually this molecule is the same as this. 
and that means all three carbons make a bond to a metal and this allyl ligand counts as three electron ligand. Okay, don't get confused with these aromatic ligands which make a bond with their pi system. We count the number of atoms which are connected to the metal. So here we have six atoms, here we have five, here we have three. And we count each bond between the carbon and the metal as one electron. And finally, I want to give you some examples. Let's take chloro pentacarbonyl manganese. So manganese with 5 CO and 1 Cl. Is this molecule stable or not? We can ask. And we can find this out simply by counting the valence electrons. So manganese is in column number 7. That means it has 7 electrons. Cl minus ligand has a negative charge. Remember, counts as one electron. Carbon monoxide has a lone pair. Each carbon monoxide counts two electrons. We have five. So altogether, 18 electrons. So we can estimate that this molecule should be stable. Okay, another example. Now, we replace manganese with rhenium and we put a phosphine here and five COs again. And the whole molecule should have positive charge. So we would say this is three fluorophosphine pentacarbonyl rhenium plus. Okay, again, first the metal, rhenium, again, is under magnesium, seven electrons. PF3 is lone pair, two electrons, and CO, again, five times, ten electrons. OO, now we have 19. But we have to consider the plus charge. The plus charge means there is one electron missing. We have to subtract one electron for the plus one. And we end up again with 18 electrons. So again, this molecule is supposed to be stable as well. And finally, I want to show you another interesting compound with platinum. Actually, ethylene can make a bond to platinum. And platinum has three other Cl ligands. The whole molecule is neg has a negative charge. This is the so-called Zeise salt, according to the chemist Zeise, who found this molecule already in the 19th century. Okay, let us count the electrons here. Platinum in column number 10, 10 electrons. 3 Cl minus 3 electrons. Olefin has 2 pi electrons, 2 electrons. Negative charge, so we have to add 1 electron more for the minus. And what do we see? We get 16 electrons. Okay, now you may say, wow, this does not follow our rule, but the exception is that the elements in the group, in the column number 10, 11, 12, they normally, because they have already so many d electrons, they don't follow the 18 electron rule. Here we often find only 16 electrons. So please remember for square planar compound with four ligands, 
the normal case is 16 electrons, not 18. 